Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's my great honor to be part of this um, fourth Europe Forum. And the topic of my today's um, keynote speech is China's digitalization and digital finance. It is um, a very relevant theme, I suppose, and it is a heated topic being debated in China, securing a lot of attention in China. And with um, the sophistication of technology such as cloud computing, fintech, uh, among others, science and technology have fundamentally changed our lifestyle, our behavior pattern, and our thinking patterns. And you can also see some massive changes brought by the technology to the traditional industrial sector and the business models, as well as um, the commercial landscape. And it has been an important driving force behind economic transformation and upgrading. And 10 years ago, the 10 biggest companies in the world, including ICBC, are those um, traditional players in the traditional sectors. But now if you look at the 10 biggest companies in terms of market value in the world, five of them are ICT companies. Sometimes ICBC, the largest bank, traditional bank in China, can be ranked as number 10 or number 11th player in this uh, global landscape. And so you can see from the change of um, the uh, players in the top 10 list that technologies have brought about fundamental changes to both our lifestyle and the business landscape in the world. So now I would like to share with you three observations. The first one is um, digital finance. It's the new business form and new stage as a result of deep integration between finance and science and technology. FinTech represented by cloud computing, mobile internet, blockchain, as well as artificial intelligence are now rapidly developing and the innovation in the finance sector has been a robust and you can see new business forms such as the digital finance has now entered into a new stage. So I think it is fair for me to say that finance and technology is interdependent and deeply intertwined. And in 1995, when the internet.com was at its peak, um, they produced the biggest noise in that time, um, especially in the internet finance. And in the United States, the very first so-called internet bank came into being, and news coverage was everywhere talking about and hyping up the internet finance and how it will bring an end to the traditional um, banking sector. Well, I think at that time, the internet finance was merely an extension of um, the financial functions thanks to the internet. And that was um, simply an, an uploading of the financial services to the internet. Or simply, we can put it this way, we turn bricks to mouses, but you don't see fundamental innovation in terms of the business forms. 20 years have passed, and science and technology have been developing by leaps and bounds. And you can see new applications of um, fintech, and also big fintech companies, ICT compass companies, and social media platforms, and big retailers, as well as some startups, have now entered into the financial service sector using their own advantages and um, strengths. For example, the traditional uh, credit card business has now been replaced by cardless payment or QR code scanning. Because now in China, when you go to the restaurants and after the meal, when you uh, get the check, you don't have to pay by cash or credit card. You simply scan the QR code and pay by Alipay or WeChat Pay. So this way is now the biggest trend, not just in China, but also in the world. And I think it is a very good innovation in terms of uh, liquidity, convenience, and profitability of the financial services. And the traditional strengths and advantages of um, the banking sector or the financial sector in terms of scale and the regions and the outlet coverage is now getting weaker and weaker because the information symmetry is now in place. Our customers and consumers now have a better control of the information so they can actively in seek of the products and services they want and they like. And they can learn about new fintechs and they will they are willing to try out new fintechs. 
And also, you have seen massive changes to the financial organizations themselves, and the staff of the financial organizations have been undergoing some transformation as well. And a lot of people now don't have jobs in the financial organizations due to the technologies. Uh, but the human capacity or the human resources capacity has been unleashed. And the、uh, mobile or say the e-banking business now have a coverage or penetration rate of ninety percent, and customers coming to the counter to get their business done is getting fewer and fewer. You see rarely such cases that customers still line up in front of a bank. Account、uh, in, in front of a bank counter to get their business done. Seventy percent of the financial transactions in the businesses are done on their mobile devices, and only thirty percent and less are done throughout face-to-face -face,、uh, interaction. And also, the financial organizations are now leveraging big data technologies to get the full picture of their customer knowledge. For example, they can analyze and mine the data to know more about the behavior features of their customers and their habits of transaction, and identify the real needs and demands of their customers. And also, this has been serving as a very concrete and accurate. Data and statistical support to precision marketing of the financial products, and I think on the digital credit line, a digital、uh, loan issuing is now getting more and more accurate in terms of、um, the fraud identification or risk control. Because in the past, the risk control management model was mainly、um, the single individual product based. And customer-based, very localized and fragmented. But now you have seen the fundamental change in terms of the digital、uh, risk control, and we see the inter interaction and the connection of the upstream and downstream, as well as the transaction across different accounts. And I think、um, we can leverage both the latest technologies and the traditional ways of、um, doing business together to provide better services to our customers. And、uh, my second point or observation I would like to share with you is、um, about the digital finance has changed fundamentally the organizations, financial organizations, as well as the financial business types. But the nature, or say、uh, the Fundamentals of the financial functions remain unchanged. Digital finance is now leveraging big data, cloud computing, and internet, among other ICT technologies, to have an in-depth integration and convergence with the traditional financial business types. And in nature, I think it is a revolution about the transmission of financial data and information. The reception of the financial data, analysis, as well as the processing of the financial data, and also we can leverage from、um, the、uh, data technologies to get hold of from、um, the flow of the goods, the flow of the capital, and the flow of information. And if you look at the online shopping business in China in 2017, the total online transaction. Exceeded over 29 trillion RMB, an increase of 11.7 percent, and the、um, online retail volume totaled 7.18 trillion RMB, an increase of 32.2 percent, and the total scale and size of shoppers online exceeded 533 million. Up by 14.3 percent year on year, and the transaction scale、uh, through the third player of payments exceeded 155 trillion RMB, among which 80 percent are covered by mobile payments and internet payment models. Well, if you look at the functions of finance, payment function is the basic and fundamental function of finance, and that is why we have the currencies and also a lot of、um, payment 
uncentered financial services, and I think it remains so in today's time. But now we have the third party players engaged in the payment solutions, and you can see the conversion or the transfer of the assets, risk management and information and processing, among other major functions of finance, have now been updated and innovated because the information asymmetry is no longer there as a big threat to these businesses. So thanks to information age and these information technologies, the customers now have better uh, commands of the information available to them. And they can make better choices and decisions and in terms of the financial transactions and payment solutions. And cryptocurrencies and the digital currencies now are part of our financial landscape as well, so that different dots on this industrial chain of finance landscape have now been connected. And the capital flow, uh, information flow, and also the goods flow can now be integrated and form the synergy together so that the different functions of finance can also come into convergence as well. So I think the scenario-based finance is um, regarded as the accelerator of the convergence and integration of financial um, functions. And some fintech companies have now established new platforms to combine different scenarios. And last but not least, my third observation is about the crossover or cross or, or interdisciplinary integration and innovation brought by the digital digital finance. So I think the way out for us in the future is to strengthen opening up and cooperation in this regard. In July this year, the Banker magazine from the UK released the latest top 1,000 global banks. 135 Chinese banks got into that list, nine more compared with um, the 2017 list. And if you look at the top 10 global banks, according to the tier one capital, there are four banks from China and four banks from America in this top 10 list, among which ICBC, where I came from, top this list for six years in a row in terms of um, its share tier one capital as much as 324 billion, 1 billion. And in terms of the profit and the total asset, ICBC also topped this list as the global biggest bank. And thanks to the reform in the industrial transformation and upgrading, we have seen the technology breakthroughs in the banking sector as well. And I think this has a lot to do with the internet business in China and the internet penetration in China. Um, in total, we have over 770 million netizens in China. The internet penetration rate in China has exceeded 56%. So I, I think we need to attribute this fast growth of um, the banking sector to the growing population surfing on the internet. And if you look at the netizens who use their mobile phones to serve the internet, 97.8% is the figure that we are talking about. 98.8%. Uh, Ninety-seven point eight percent of um, the netizens here in China are using their smartphones to serve on the internet, and also three G and four G network are being developed uh, very fast and robustly in China. And according to the Luat's uh, latest survey in two thousand and sixteen, um, 
There are 21 major financial or fintech centers in the world, um, taking into account their business environment, financial development, and infrastructure in finance and human resources. And the top four financial sectors or, or fintech centers are London, Singapore, New York, and Silicon Valley. And only Shanghai got into this list, uh, ranking the 11th in this list from mainland China. So we have a long way to go before we can catch up with the top players in the fintech landscape. And I think we need to stand on the right stance and viewpoint to oppose trade protectionism. And also, we are a staunch supporter of fair and equal digital economy trade rules so that we can have a shared a digital market available to us all. And this market will feature in-depth integration and mutual benefit and win-win results to all the stakeholders in this digital market. And I think um, the top and top uh, and uh, well-fledged performers in the fintech business need to have a better control of the risks. And in the fintech landscape, we don't um, admire those sprinters. We respect marathon champions. So I hope that we can maintain this long-term approach to be the ultimate winner in this landscape and sector. And from my point of view, we think that we need to strengthen our cooperation in the cyber security, digital and data security, and the customer um, protection. Uh, we need to join hands together that cross and transcend boundaries of uh, nationalities and industries to have better supervision and protection of um, the financial sector. And as Mr. Tian Mu from China, a great scholar from China, once said that the, fu um, the future is already here when the past is not entirely gone. So we need to grasp this trend and write the trend to um, leverage the digital revolution here with us. Thank you.